Wow. Max Q, that's the phase of maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle, passing through that now. Now we should be seeing that plume expansion. Gotta love that plume expansion oh. then. As the see there on the left, you can see some vapor coming coming there. That's actually the MBAC engine chill. So they're chilling now the the pumps on on the upper stage MBAC engine, and you can see some of that living out there from the interstage. Very important if you follow Starship because there's something similar Starship. So keep an eye on that. And there you go. You can see the plume expanding as the vehicle climbs into thinner and thinner atmosphere with lower and lower pressure. That is nominal and also very cool. Next up is going to be Miko, followed shortly by second stage start, and then fairing SEP. Let's watch and see. I guess, I guess also there's second stage SEP as well. And you can see that MVAC engine Alex was just talking about there, and good SEP. Mm-hmm. And we have second engine startup. Yeah, if you see all those dangling cables and bits and things like that, those are used for that for that engine chill and other kind of trains and things like that. And there's That's why you see. Up. There we go. And you can see the grid fins extending on the Falcon 9 first stage there on the left. Those are what helps steer the booster as it comes down into thicker and thicker atmosphere. While on the right... The second stage is powering itself into orbit. Look at the lights. If you were wondering what all the things that flew off the second stage engine as it ignited, those are stiffener rings. That nozzle extension on this particular variant of the Merlin uh, rocket engine is uh, its quite a, a large nozzle, and those stiffener rings are used to... Uh, I don't know, how would you describe that, Alex? Just sort of shore things up for the vibration of launch? Yeah, it's it's a very delicate uh, extension nozzle there for for the MVAC. So it's very very thin, and so it needs a stiffener there, so so you can keep a little bit of a stiff on the structure, so it doesn't really break up. Makes sense. But yeah, once the once the the thing is in space, it doesn't really need it. All right, the next thing we are going to see here in a little bit is the entry burn on the Falcon Nine first stage. All the while, the second stage firing its single Merlin engine and pushing those 56 satellites into orbit. It's 56, right? I, I'm getting that right? Yep. I'm getting Futurama vibes. I mean, unless, unless they have, you know, lost two in the way <laughs> to orbit or something, this, they're still 56. You know good 56 and 56-er? Uh, that's a Futurama reference. Um, mm. Awesome. Well, let's continue watching this you can see the speed on the second stage rapidly increasing which is kind of wild meanwhile the speed on the first stage is very slowly increasing because it is falling back to earth but once we do get that entry burn on the first stage you will see that indicated speed rapidly scrubbed off there um, it's always one of those cool things to see on launches it's just watching the juxtaposition between the two vehicles and what exactly they're doing you can see the altitude of the second stage is at 175 miles. Or is it kilometers? It's getting cut off for me. Yeah, I should expect that to, to go a little bit over 200 kilometers for the second stage. Excellent. And we saw those fairings pop off earlier, and you know sometimes we get asked, oh, what are they doing with the fairings? They're, they're using them, but they are not catching them as they used to with those nets. The net boat? It's more like, yeah. It's more like they let it just splash down in the ocean and then they recovered them. 
But it usually takes a long time, like 30 to 40 minutes, because they go on their parachutes. So it's a slow, slow thing. It's pretty wild. I mean, we all kind of talk about the catch tower in Boca Chica and the one that they're building. Well, mm. I don't know if it's a catch tower at 39A, but still. But the original crazy catch scheme that SpaceX had was the, the net boats. Yep. But unfortunately, those are no more because it was determined that they don't need them. They can just fish the fairing out of the water and reuse it, and it's not a big deal, apparently. Which always kind of blew my mind, given that, you know, salt water bad. And it's not like the fairing is just an inert shell. Like, there's a and lot also, of, of uh, electronics and other hardware. In yeah. There. And the contamination, like, you know, it's being in the ocean, then you've got to clean it up and, and all of that. Yeah, it's wild. And some... been, their fairing reuse program has been wildly successful, so it's pretty nifty. Mm. Here we go. Coming up on entry burn. You can see those cold gas thrusters on the first stage orienting the vehicle, and bam! Engine ignition and entry burn. This is where the rocket is shielding itself with its own fire as it descends through the thicker and thicker atmosphere. Watch the speed being scrubbed off there. That is just so cool to see. And shutdown. All right, that was entry burn. Next up, we will have, nearly simultaneously, landing of the first stage and engine cutoff on the second stage. So that is the next milestone we are watching for here. Hey, now, it, it's, it's because it's very dark, but usually when, when it's daylight, they show the, the views from the booster. And right after entry burn, the whole thing just is loose and use the grid fins and everything to glide. It's not really technically glide, but you, you get what I mean, right? It steers itself all the way to the to the drone ship, and it's it's amazing to see that. I mean, it's more amazing when they do it and land, but you know what I mean. I do know what you mean. Should be coming up soon on that in, on that landing burn. Just a moment here. And there we go. You can see the grid fins wiggling there to provide some control authority. What a cool shot. We should see the drone ship sort of appear out of the mists. There you are. Gosh, that looks so sci-fi. I'm never going to get tired of that. And landing of B-1067. That looks like a bullseye. I love how the speed is like one, one, zero, one. <laughs> it's like you can't decide. And we should have second engine cutoff as well. Look at that. Just a spacecraft return yep. from launching something into orbit, no big deal. They just called nominal orbit insertion, so there we go. Fantastic. Well, there doesn't you have get, it. Doesn't get old. There you have it, 56 Starlink satellites in space that were just a few minutes ago sitting on the ground at Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Oh, that's cool to see the engine bell there still glowing red hot. Look at oh, that. Oh, look at that. That is gorgeous. Limb of the Earth there, illuminated. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I think during launch, too, that audio, I think we were getting some sonic squeal from the, from the VAB. It was a, just a beautiful launch all around. <laughs> and there it Easy. is. The, our favorite site, definitely Das's favorite site, after a launch, an empty launch pad, because that means we uh, we got to see the thing go. It's not still there, and we're not still waiting for it to launch because of a scrub or anything else. It went, and that is what we wanted to see this morning. Oh boy! Yeah, that was a that was a nice one. I'm, yeah, those views were beautiful. Alrighty, well, with that, I think we will call it a night or morning or wherever you are around the world, whatever time it is for you. Either way, 
thank you so much for joining us on another NASA Space Flight launch stream. Um, we will, of course, be keeping our ears to the ground for any testing going on at Starbase. And you better believe any upcoming launches that we can cover, we will. So stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the like button if you like what we do. You know all the generic YouTube stuff. But with that, Alex, thanks for joining us. Always a pleasure. And I think Thomas got the boot from his audio setup. It like glitched out on him or something. So Thomas, uh, I, if you can hear me, thanks for rolling out there and setting up a camera and tracking the rocket for us at an ungodly hour in the morning. <laughs> and of course, I'm Jack Byer with NASA Space Flight. The guy with the beard who loves bacon. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone for joining us. We will see you nerds next time. Pressure looks good. Probably not. Right